Now. Good evening and thank you for joining us. I'm Cash Matlock. There were at least six reports of tornadoes across the state today. Some of them near Jackson, a couple in Itala County, one in Newton County and Choctaw County as well. A possible tornado was reported in the Double Springs area in Octibaha County. The National Weather Service will have to confirm these reports. Now, power lines were down in Choctaw County on Highway 12 between Ackerman and Sturgis. We also have some images of trees down in Newport from other from another possible tornado. Now, these images were sent in by viewers in those areas. Now take a look at our radar here. This is a time lapse of storms in our area earlier today. Octibaha County EMA Director Kristen Campanella says there were at least 300 people without power in the, in the county, as well as reports of roof damage around Self Creek Road. There were several other reports of power outages. And uh, we're going to have some of those coming up later in the show. I'm going to toss things over now to meteorologist Jacob Dickey. Jacob, about how many people are without power? Yeah, we still have a lot of power outages cache in the mm. area, primarily in Itala and in Choctaw County, and that is mainly around 1,700. A lot of that is some of the damage that we're seeing. This is a photo from Jay Gilbert in McCool here. These trees are down across the road in the McCool area. Notice this. Here's a house. See the roof that's damaged there? The carport blew down on top of a vehicle. Other damage to trees in the area. You can see how some of these trees are snapped off above the ground. That is sometimes an indication of something more than damaging straight line winds. The National Weather Service will be out checking all of these areas to confirm tornado reports in our region. We'll have more on that, of course, in the coming days. Tonight, I'll also have a full look at your forecast in just a bit. All right, thanks, Jacob. An Alabama man is dead after a single vehicle crash Saturday evening. Corporal Richard A. Itter with the Alabama Department of Public Safety says 30 year old Kenneth B. Thomas of Dora, Alabama, died around 6 o'clock last night. Officers say Thomas was traveling on County Road 9, just seven miles south of Vernon, when his truck left the roadway and overturned. Thomas was pronounced dead at the scene. Alabama state troopers are investigating that incident. We're going to have more information on that as it becomes available. Well, in national news, New York City police arrested a suspect earlier today after a knife-wielding intruder stabbed five people in a large group celebrating Hanukkah at a rabbi's home. And this was in the suburb about 30 miles north of the city. CBS News correspondent Laura Podesta has the latest from New York. I have three patients right now down, heavy bleeding. I need multiple ambulances, please, at least four to five. New York City police arrested Grafton Thomas early Sunday after he drove across the George Washington Bridge. He's the primary suspect in the Saturday night stabbing attack on a gathering of people lighting Hanukkah candles at the home of a rabbi in the largely ultra-Orthodox Jewish suburb of Munsey. 37-year-old Thomas was arraigned Sunday in Rockland County pleading not guilty to five counts of attempted murder and one count of burglary. Authorities say Thomas stormed into the house with a large knife. I asked who was coming in in the middle of the night with an umbrella. While I was saying that, he pulled it out from the thing and he started to run into the big room, which was on the left side. And, and I throw him tables and chairs that he should get out of here. Governor Andrew Cuomo said New York has seen more than a dozen anti Semitic incidents since early December. This is terrorism. It is domestic terrorism. In a letter Sunday, Orthodox Jewish elected officials urged Cuomo to declare a state of emergency. Jewish communities in and around New York City have been on edge since a deadly shooting rampage at a kosher market in Jersey City earlier this month. After last night's bloodshed, the Hanukkah event continued in a display of strength and faith. Laura Podesta, CBS News, New York. Bail for Grafton Thomas was set at $5 million, and he remained jailed today. He is scheduled to be back in court on Friday. Well, there's, there's a new federal law apparently in effect, raising the age to buy tobacco products. Local tobacco retailers are dealing with some confusion after what they say is a sudden law change. Our DeAndrea Turner has more on the story. If you want to buy tobacco, you must be 21 years old. On Friday, the FDA noted on its website that it is illegal for a retailer to sell any tobacco products, including cigarettes, cigars, and e-cigarettes, to anyone under 21. Zachariah Abdu owns Sandfield One Stop and says he would like proper protocol. Normally, you know, the tobacco companies, they send us a letter informing us that, you know, the age limit has been changed. 
definitely right now we have not received anything in you know I'm just hearing it from you really because the bill doesn't have an effective date Abdu says he is confused on what to do that's the law now and if it, if it is effective so uh, I don't know what to do I mean are, are we going to sell for uh, you know uh, people who are under age 21 Abdu put up a handmade sign warning about the new law, and in the meantime, he's not selling to anyone under 18. And we, we, they're not going to get no uh, cigar or cigarette. He says he would rather be safe and in compliance with the federal guidelines. Well, the increased age restriction for tobacco purchases is attached to a, a broader $1.4 trillion spending agreement. Getting your kids to do their chores has never been easier. Mom to Mom is next. Stay with us. You're watching WCBI News at 10 p.m. with Cash Matlock. Well, getting your kids to do their chores can sometimes be challenging. Today on Mom to Mom, we've got some ideas that will make your kids actually want to do their chores. Take a look. Today on Mom to Mom, we're going to show you a fun little trick to get your kiddos to do some work around the house. When your kids are old enough to come to you and ask for money, they're old enough to earn it, right? That's why the jar of opportunities has come in so much handy around our house. Basically, all it is are popsicle sticks with fun little chores to do around the house and how much they can actually make. All you need to do is write a chore that you want done around the house. We do this weekly and of course daily. So they get to pull one stick out a day. It tells you how much money they earn on it for that day. Once, they're, once they completed it, you can either stick it in another mason jar or you can put it in a drawer until the following week. My son, who is a middle schooler, loves this because he can earn money for those video games or recently they've been wanting to buy those Christmas presents for his sister. This concept will also work well for date nights or one-on-one -on -one time. I mean, how many times have you been trying to go on a date and you're like, where do you want to go eat? Where do you want to go eat? And it, ah, it becomes a big old fight. Well, the sticks will do the job for you. All you have to do is pull one out and it tells you exactly where to go. Same with the one-on-one -on -one time. Each kid, depending on how many you have, deserves that one-on-one -on -one time with each parent. So it's a really fun way to pull out a stick and it just tell you where you can go to do something really fun. As always, moms, we would love to hear your creative ways at getting your kids to do things around the house. Feel free to post those to our Facebook page, and we'll see you on the next Mom to Mom. From big box office to celebrity scandals, and from Lizzo to Keanu, it's been a wild year in entertainment, and David Daniel looks at some of the highlights and lowlights from 2019. It was a year of Disney domination. The mega studio, which already owned Lucasfilm, Marvel, and Pixar, completed its acquisition of 21st Century Fox. It also owned the box office, breaking its own yearly ticket sales record with more than $10 billion globally, led by Avengers Endgame, which made a worldwide record $2.8 billion. Domestically, Disney had six of the year's seven top grossing films, and that was before Star Wars The Rise of Skywalker hit theaters. Disney also started its own streaming service, Disney Plus, amassing more than 10 million subscribers within days of launch. But it wasn't the only new combatant in the streaming wars. Apple TV Plus also joined the fray, taking on more established services such as Netflix and Amazon Prime Video. 2019 did not bring George R.R. R. Martin's long-awaited last two books in his Song of Ice and Fire series, but on TV, HBO's Game of Thrones ended its eight-season run with a lot of dead characters and more than a few fan complaints. He's the puppet master. The Lifetime documentary Surviving R. Kelly prompted new investigations of the singer, who now faces federal charges in Illinois and New York related to sexual misconduct. He's pleaded not guilty and is being held without bond in Chicago. Also in the Windy City, actor Jussie Smollett told police two men attacked him yelling racist and homophobic slurs. After investigating, police arrested Smollett, accusing him of staging the assault, though he denied that and the charges were eventually dropped. In Los Angeles, rapper and community activist Nipsey Hussle was killed outside his clothing store. We also lost filmmaker John Singleton and actor Luke Perry both to massive strokes, both in their early 50s. 
Two Hollywood actresses were among the 50-plus people charged in the college admissions scandal. Felicity Huffman pleaded guilty, admitting she paid $15,000 to boost her daughter's SAT scores and served 11 days in federal prison. Lori Laughlin and her husband deny allegations they paid half a million dollars to get their daughters into the University of Southern California under false pretenses. They face up to 45 years in prison if convicted. The year's breakout music star, Lizzo. The relentlessly positive singer, songwriter, and rapper hit number one on the Billboard chart with her self-empowerment anthem, Truth Hurts. She brought down the house with performances from the VMAs to NPR, led the Grammy nominations, and even popped up on the big screen in Hustlers. No wonder Time Magazine named her its Entertainer of the Year. Selena Gomez returned with Lose You to Love Me from her first album since 2015 when she revealed she has the autoimmune disease lupus. And Keanu Reeves was everywhere in 2019, starring in John Wick Chapter 3 Parabellum, lending his voice to Toy Story 4, popping up in the trailer for the video game Cyberpunk 2077, playing an over-the-top version of himself in Always Be My Maybe, and even showing up in the trailer for the SpongeBob movie Sponge on the Run. Hello. Call me Sage. Good name. I'm made out of Sage and I am a Sage. So it works out pretty well. In Hollywood, I'm David Daniel. Take a deep breath. Storms are gone. We're finished with them. Nice and cool by tomorrow morning down into the upper 30s and low 40s. Some quieter weather is on tap to round out the year 2019. We'll let you know what the start of 2020 brings right here after the break. FBI First Alert AccuWeather Forecast with meteorologist Jacob Dickey. It is much quieter on our Alpha Insurance Sky Camp in downtown Columbus as we look off in the distance. Had some wind and rain and even a few possible tornadoes across the region. Of course, the National Weather Service will be out tomorrow surveying damaged areas and we'll bring you those updates, of course, on the news throughout the day tomorrow and in online on the app. Here's where we are for current temperatures. Much cooler with the severe threat off to our east. We've got down to 49 in Eupora, 48 in Winona. It is 50 in Ackerman, 50 52 in Columbus, Vernon, Alabama is at 53. We've got west winds here behind the cold front bringing in some cooler air. If we wanted to get really cold, we'd need some more northerly winds, but instead that west wind will still cool us down a bit here as those winds continue between 5 and 15 miles an hour, perhaps a little bit higher overnight tonight. Even starting to see some clearing in the clouds here, heading for a mostly clear night. There's that back edge of it here. Those rain and storms are all into eastern Alabama, moving into Georgia now out of our area. Good riddance. Let's get rid of them and hope we finish those for a long time, right? Tonight, down into the low 40s, even upper 30s. The showers are done. We're clearing out and cooling down and could see some gusts a little high at times tomorrow. Lots of sunshine coming for us, though, on our Monday. We need some sunshine, don't we? 52 the high in Pontotoc, 54 in Aberdeen and in Tupelo. West winds will be between 5 and 15 miles an hour during the day. 54 the high in Sullivan and in Vernon, 56 in Aliceville, and then into the Golden Triangle. Columbus at 55. We'll get to 52 in Starkville and and in Ackerman, 51 in Monona. It will be a bit chilly. This, though, is actually close to average for this time of year. There's the planner there. Notice how we get those temperatures in the afternoon and cool off quickly. Tomorrow night, I really think we're heading down into the 30s in some spots here as this cold front slides off to the east. We'll kick it out and say hello to a couple of days of sunshine here all the way through Tuesday. Monday and Tuesday looking quite nice out there. Watch what happens as we get into Wednesday here. We start to see some showers off to our south and east. The daytime will be dry Wednesday, but by Wednesday night we get some rain and likely keeping rain around into the day on Thursday. At this point, it looks like it will be mostly a rain event with perhaps a few storms, but of course, we'll keep you updated if that changes. Just enjoy this nice, quiet weather here for the next few days. Uh, I do think overall the pattern looks fairly typical for this time of year. Our average highs are in the middle 50s, maybe a little bit warmer Thursday and Friday. We'll keep you updated with the first alert. Well, Jacob, we made it through the severe weather. We did. The weekend, <laughs> we're, you know, unfortunately, ending the weekend. I wish we right. had all that sunshine in the weekend, right? I know. A lot I know. more folks could enjoy it. Definitely a good way to bring in the new year, though, with that sunshine. Oh, so. absolutely. And 2019, what a year we've had, too. Yeah. Uh, in fact, coming up later on this upcoming week, we'll have a full top mm -hmm. five 
review yeah. of the biggest events. Right. And, uh, and you that, said it's one of the wettest we're, years we've had. And it really yeah. has been. We've mm -hmm. had a lot of water, a uh, number of tornado outbreaks and whatnot. So we'll have all those details. You can look for that around the New Year's Eve, New Year's Day time frame. Okay. All right. Thank you, Jacob. Well, more from the Music City Bowl after the break. Sports with Courtney is next. Stay with us. EI Sports with Courtney Robb. The 2019 season has come with a whole host of trials and tribulations for the Mississippi State Bulldogs. After finishing the regular season 6-6, six and six, that brings us to Nashville, Tennessee, where we're standing right now. Mississippi State getting ready to take on the Louisville Cardinals in the Music City Bowl. And the biggest tribulation of this current event is the fact that starting freshman quarterback Garrett Schrader will not be playing in the bowl game. Head coach Joe Moorhead naming Tommy Stevens as the brand new starter coming after what Joe Moorhead said earlier this week as an upper body injury. Moorhead later confirming the fact that the upper body injury came after an altercation in practice with linebacker Willie Gay. And although plenty of issues for Schrader not being able to play in this matchup, Moorhead saying the whole team has plenty of confidence in Stevens. We're experts at it this year, so we, we've, we've done it a time or two. We've played the shuffle, but yeah, I mean, Tommy's an experienced guy. Uh, you know, when he's been healthy, he's performed very well, so Tommy will be the number one, and uh, he'll go in and operate the offense and, you know, make plays with his arm and his feet, and I know the guys have a ton of confidence in him. I like to take pride, at least, you know, from every opportunity that I did have to start. I mean, I'm talking, like, way back, even my redshirt freshman year at Penn State, I always took it as I was a starter and continue to do the same things here, even, you know, when I was a starter, when I haven't been a starter, so... Um, there have been no changes as far as how, how I've prepared. Head coach Joe Moorhead has not given any indication of whether or not Willie Gay will in fact either play, miss minutes, or whatever due to that altercation that happened with Garrett Schrader earlier this week. For that, we'll have to wait to see what happens during actual game time. We'll continue bringing you all the coverage here on WCBI Sports. Kickoff is at 3 p.m. here in Nashville, Monday, December 30th. Reporting in Nashville, Courtney Robb, WCBI Sports. Sports coverage of the Music City Bowl is brought to you by OCH Regional Hospital and the Columbus Convention and Visitors Bureau. Welcome back, everyone. Gamers and Tupelo came together today to beat the weather and enjoy the afternoon. WCBI's Tyler Hull was in Tupelo and found out more about what was going on. Gamers are in Tupelo making the most of their Sunday. The Link Center in Tupelo is normally used for concerts, but on Sundays it turns into a haven for gamers. CEO of Showdown Esports, Stephen Straley, says the goal is to create a community for gamers. We started out with an idea to, uh, to basically start an esports organization, and the original plan, and still what we're sticking with and working on, is uh, building an uh, esports arena. Uh, and actually having something open 24 hours a day that can provide not only services for fighting games and the FGC related events, but everything throughout esports and bring it to a rural area. This event is focused on fighting games and the gamers who play them. This event specifically is uh, intended to be a fighting game community oriented esports event. So um, games like Smash Brothers Ultimate or Tekken or um, Street Fighter people will be more familiar with and it's of course in a competitive uh, double elimination format. Players use different gaming systems. So uh, we mostly utilize uh, PlayStation 4's and Nintendo Switches for uh, for this event. Uh, we also have arcade machines on the side, the uh, Pandora's box specifically that you saw sitting off to one side. Uh, we're working on getting more of those as well for the event. That has a lot of old arcade games that you can play, Pac-Man and uh, so on. Straley and his wife provide all of the equipment. We supply enough game systems and games to actually get through the event. Any game that we officially support, we have at least one game system and one copy of the game with all of the downloadable content for that particular title so that we can support that in a term of format. Um, now, people are allowed to bring their consoles from outside if they want to and play on the sides. You know, we've got a couple of extra monitors with them that we can set up and provide HDMI cables and power. Reporting in Tupelo, Tyler Hall, WCBI News. For more information, you can follow them on Twitter at Showdown LLC. Right, we're going to take a quick break, but when we come back, Jacob will have a final look at the weather.
Well, it's the end of a decade, and we took to our Facebook page to find out what your New Year's resolutions are. Here are a few replies from some of our top fans on social media. Betty McCoy says her resolution is to find someone to share her happiness with, whether it be a boyfriend or a husband. Uh, she says 2020 is the year. Yeah, you go, girl. <laughs> Aaron Walker <laughs> says her resolution is to be successful in completing her national boards as a teacher. So I'm going to wish her good luck. Good luck, yeah. And uh, Kim Corbell's resolution is to always be kind and mindful to others. And finally, and this is my favorite one, Jacob, Sarah Flowers Sykes says she just wants to make it to work three days out of the week and be on time. I just so. want to make it to work three days. <laughs> I, can I work a three-day week? Is that possible? Especially if we uh, have some quieter weather. It's been an active day for I us. I know, right? But, but yeah, so um, my resolution also, I wish I could be at work on time. What about you? you you're not wrong. And I think tomorrow <laughs> the bosses maybe will be a little forgiving for us. If maybe we're, so. We're a little bit late. It's been an active day, of course. Maybe Here's so. the quick seven days. A lot quieter this week. Lots of sunshine coming. Happy New Year on Wednesday as we start 2020. We're looking forward to it. All right. Well, thank you guys for joining us. We'll see you back here tomorrow.